Welcome to the Welsh Ribbon Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be tackling this huge old log, <laughs> big old tree, and we're going to be turning that into a giant bowl. So if it's your first time here, I'm a woodworking channel, do lots of wood turning videos and woodworking videos throughout the week and I upload every Friday. Stay tuned for future videos and I hope you enjoy tonight's project. Before we turn the machine on, this can be deadly if we don't do a few checks beforehand. So I'm making sure that I've got full free movement. A little bit unbalanced, so heavier towards this side. Be careful of that when we're turning, and we're making sure it's not touching the tool post. The second most important thing we need to do is make sure we've got slow start if your lathe has that, and we've got the control speed all the way down to the lowest point, as we don't want to turn this on on a high speed. That could be disastrous. Another important check we need to do before we turn the machine on is remove any loose bits of bark or things that are going to fly off. I've actually had a, a strip of bark and was slapping on the back of the hand. I almost felt like a, a cane coming down on the back of my hand. Pretty nasty. So you want to remove all these bits and it also doesn't clog up your tool as much as well. So we're just going to do that with a chisel and a, a mallet before we start turning them on. And we're going to make sure we've got personal protective equipment on, like a face mask, just in case. Right, this should take a while. So we're going to come in using quite a wide bowl gouge there, just to remove material. My tool against my hip, just feed them in nice and slowly. And I'm aiming to get a nice level surface across the bottom. If I had uh, an electric chainsaw, I could actually slice some of this uh, away. That would probably be a far more efficient way of doing it than using tools. We've got the outside sort of rough turned. I love this sort of feature. So with uh, a lot of rock was coming through. That's why this tree was uh, actually felled. Sort of been dangerous not to. So I'm just going to redefine the bottom now. As you can see, it's a heck of a beast. But what a lovely sort of feature in the middle of that. I like it. It's been a little bit of a pain to turn as as any crack is, uh, especially around the other side. Really looking forward to turning the inside of this. So decided because of the little bits of rot, I'm going to go for a mortise on the inside. So I'm going to be expanding these jaws and I've got my gripper jaws. And they've got some really, really sort of pronounced dovetails in there. So as they expand, they should grip onto the, the inside profile then of the mortise I'm going to do. So I'm just going to do that then and then I can start sort of putting a little bit of a foot on this and blending these curves round so it doesn't look so elongated. So using a set of dividers then, I'm going to put the trading point downwards as I'm scoring onto the wood. By making sure I'm not touching with the other point, otherwise it'll come over like that. So on that mark then, I'm going to be using a parting tool. So a time saving tip then for establishing the depth. If you put your parting tool up against your jaws, mark over with a bit of pen or chalk where the depth is, you're going to get the perfect depth each time and it saves you sort of knocking about with depth gauges and things like that you can basically see I've got about 5mm to go then so I've established a foot there where we're going to be expanding the jaws into and I'm just working away now just blending this in to make sure it's sort of sitting up from the table when it would be put down onto the table just it looks a little bit nicer on the, the aesthetics, ple more pleasing to the eye. And I'm just going to blend this whole thing in now, into that foot bay. So 
So a lot happier with that shape now. So more of a round come in, almost like a wine glass. I quite like the, the look of that. So it's going to blend in a tiny, tiny bit of these tool marks. Then be ready to start a little bit of sanding before we flip him round. Sharp my tool did a finishing cut all the way along the top, which reduced the sanding probably by half. So I've just done some light sanding then over the top. And we're just ready to seal this piece now with a wax finish that I'm going to go for, uh, which you can always buff up afterwards because this is pretty green still, so you can still feel the, the moisture, especially through the bark bits. It's better to seal that in, and I find that wax does a better job than oils. So, just applied a thin coat of wax over the top, that should help the drying out process. Right with the chuck on the back, so we're going to reverse him now. So, it's a heavy beast to hold, so I'm going to get a the reinforcements in to turn them round. Right, so I've got them turned round and I've just sort of faced off the top a little bit. And I've put in my McNaughton Centre Saver system. So I've got my straight parting tool and we're gonna to attempt to make a straight sort of parting cut so hopefully we'll get another blank out of this. Now I haven't had much luck with this lately. Every time I've got managed to get a catch and it's things have flown off, so it's a little bit of a a risk doing this rather than just hollowing out the centre but hopefully by doing this it's going to save us a little bit of time in removing some of the centre and we'll have some fun sort of other bits of wood to do some other projects with. Another great feature of this lathe is that you can mount light pretty much anywhere you want with all these different holes on there, especially when you're doing deep hollowing. You can only put it on the top and face it up, but this is quite large, so I can just put my lamp there out of the way and I can still carry on with my tin and stuff to give you a little bit of a better view on the inside. So I'm hollowing this out quite slowly, so I'm just using a, a bowl gouge to do this. Okay, come to a little problem in the fact that my tool rest isn't long enough for the piece, so that's going to be, I think, the next project to get this project done. <laughs> so it's a couple of days later, and I've knocked up a tool post. So it starts off with a, a 45 millimeter diameter bar. I turned down then to 40 millimeters so it could fit into the the tool post. And I've drilled a hole, bored an inch hole, turned the top of the bar down the engineering lathe to fit in the hole. Interference fit. The chamfer on the top welded it into place, so it's nice and solid, I can actually hang off this, which is good. Get these lovely long thin shavings, just I've given this a sharp before using it. Start to see light coming through now, this little gap, where the, uh, this undercut piece of rot is, so we're going to have to be really careful. So I've got about five inches to go. What I'm going to do is drill to the bottom depth. So as soon as I sort of blend that in, I know I'm not to go any deeper. Otherwise, I'd be hitting my mortise in there. So I've just marked with a bit of chalk onto this twist drill bit. And I just drill the centre at the best I can. So just check in as I go with calipers. And these ones are brilliant because you can gauge the, uh, the thickness from looking at this in theory. So yeah, I've got a little bit of a flare there, I need to uh, sort of turn in to make sure I've got an even wall thickness. And I should be able to lock this in place in theory and travel down the whole length of the, the wall and it be the same thickness. That's going to allow this to dry out at an even rate, number one. And two, it's far more likely to, to sort of keep the form without too dramatically warping that way.
So I've only got about an inch to go now to get to the bottom. I'm really liking this new tool rest. Quite nice, you can put your arm in there, do some push cuts, do some pull cuts to hog away material. Really, really sturdy. So making it this thick, there's no vibration at all in the tool rest and it's giving it fantastic support. And the fact it's got a nice round as well, you can really adjust where you wanna put your tools, so your scrapers and things. Later on, I can, I can do a nice undercut by just angling the, the tool rather than keep adjusting the rest, which is quite nice. So happy with it overall. Continue hollowing out now one inch, then we can get some finishing cuts done. Right, just finally hollowed the inside out. You see where the rot is going through right at the bottom there. Got a nice shape on it though, and it's worked out quite nicely. The fact that I could have gone a little bit thinner with this, but I think it's quite balanced in terms of the thickness there. Thickness there are exactly the same, so happy. So it's a nice, nice sort of feature that comes through in with that one. So it's a bit of a chunky bowl, but for its size, I think we can get away with it. So what I'm going to do now is start sanding the inside. And I'm going to use a palm sander to do that, just because it's going to be easier to, to get in here and sand rather than sand it all by hand. Just putting a Fiddies and Sons wax polish over the top. So just going to be using a brush thing to brush it up. Then two coats of wax over the top, buffed them up with the uh, with a brush, and I quite like that finish. I'm not going to go any shinier than that. I think it's going to distract it a bit too much from the piece if it's just completely shiny. Then that's suited. We're going to take it off. Right, here's the completed piece. Really lots of fun turning this, and I like the fact that we've managed to keep in this sort of character crack at the top. So, deep old bowl slash hollow form, and you can still see the uh, the rotten bits in there from the tree. I'm going to carve the bottom off shortly and put my logo disc in there. <laughs> it's quite a big beast to manage this thing, but had a lot of fun turning this. It's been a heck of a challenge starting off with that really unbalanced log and turn it into something with a bit of character like this. So I hope you've enjoyed tonight's project. If you have enjoyed tonight's project, please consider supporting me and subscribing to my channel by hitting the link below, as that really helps me out and gets more videos like this your way. So I hope you have a great night. Dielkenvaur, Nostar.